Hey everyone, welcome back to our devotional series on how to read the Bible for all it's worth, or how to read the Bible literally. Last week, we explored uh, the importance of asking the question, who is the author? Uh, we discovered that uh, knowing the author of a particular book of the Bible helps us to understand their purpose and the culture they were writing in. Today, we're going to delve into another crucial question, to whom are they writing? Understanding the audience of a biblical text is key to unlocking its full meaning. When we ask, to whom are they writing, we gain insight into specific circumstances, challenges, and needs of the original recipients. To understand, uh, this understanding can profoundly shape how we read, interpret, and apply the Bible in our lives today. Let's uh, actually do this by working through a tricky example. Many people today either shy away or are greatly confused by the book of Revelation at the end of the New Testament. If you've ever read this book, it contains vivid imagery, figurative language, allusions to other parts of the Bible, metaphor, and much of it is written in code. Many people today try to view Revelation as this book of secrets that if we only read it through the correct lens, it will unlock all the answers, particularly the answers to the questions that we are currently wrestling with in our current context. So people will point to the events happening in the Middle East, or about Christians being persecuted in some part of the world, or a government dictator ruling with a tyrannical hand and say, Revelation is talking about these exact things, and we should understand it as prophecy written to us living in the 21st century. But not only is that that way of reading Revelation slightly unhelpful, but it actually makes uh, it meaningless to John's original audience and to people who have read Revelation throughout the centuries. What do I mean by that? Well, let's ask our question, to whom was this particular book of the Bible written to? And we don't have to go very far to find out the answer. Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. Revelation, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take heart what is written, because the time is near." John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you uh, from him who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom of priests, Kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So it shall be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. These verses answer our question from last week, telling us who is writing the book, John, but it also tells us to whom he is writing. Seven church communities scattered around Asia Minor, or what is modern-day Western Turkey. Um, he even tells us why he is writing to these churches, uh, letting them know that they are loved and saved by Jesus, and that this Jesus is coming back, and everyone will know who he is. These churches, when we read further into the book, are all facing their own various trials that John specifically addresses in chapters 2 and 3. However, the gist of the book of Revelation is um, about a problem that all of these churches are actually facing, that they are living in the first major worldwide persecution of Christians. Um, these churches and other churches were being shut down, jailed, ostracized, exiled, tortured, and killed. These were real events that were happening in their lifetime. And by knowing to whom this was written to, we know more about them, particularly the questions they would have been asking. How can we understand this evil happening to us? Has the enemy won? Is it worth holding on to our faith? Does God 
see us, and care about us. So John's primary concern in writing this letter to these real churches made up of real people going through real pain and suffering is not to tell them about events that will happen 2,000 years in the future that will make no sense to them and be of no help to them in their present circumstances. That just makes no sense. Um, that's not to say that Revelation does not discuss events in the distant future, because it certainly does. But by knowing John's audience, we can see that what these words would have meant to them then, that God has not abandoned them, that this persecution and hardship is not for nothing, and despite present circumstances, God is in control. He will vindicate you, so keep clinging to Jesus. This book would have helped them to understand their circumstances and give them hope in both the present and the future. By knowing who this audience is, and what the book meant to them then, it then informs us of what it means to us today. Because Revelation was not written uh, to us living in the 21st century, but it was written for us. It's messages of hope despite suffering, of spiritual battles that God has sovereignty over, of holding on to Jesus even when you face persecution, and the knowledge that this is not the end of the story for those who belong to the Lamb, is all incredibly meaningful and relevant for us today. But first, we must understand what it meant to the original hearers first before we jump into understanding it for us today. Asking to whom are they writing enriches our reading of the Bible by providing context that bridges the gap between the ancient world and our modern lives. It helps us see the relevance of biblical teachings and empowers us to apply God's word even more faithfully and effectively. With that said, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that transcends time and culture. Help us to ask the right questions as we read the Bible so that we may understand, interpret, and apply your teaching in our lives today. Give us wisdom to grasp the context and the courage to live out our faith boldly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Next week we'll continue our series with another important question to enhance our understanding of the Bible. I hope you have a blessed day. See you later. Bye.